I'm wondering where you sit with some of that, how you respond to some of that criticism of this is way overly brain centric, neurocentric from folks. Yep. I usually start by saying, good point. You have some, you're right there in some ways. The field, the larger field of pain diagnosis has broken things down to primary versus secondary pain. There's a whole bunch of pain problems that look like they're largely driven by structural bodily pathologies. Though even in those cases, the brain has to get the, the nociceptive or neuropathic signaling from the body and do something with it. And it creates a pretty accurate representation of the body's problems called pain. But most of the patients are not that way. Most of the time, the brain is doing more of the work independent of what it's picking up from the body and creating an experience that's probably not too reflective of what's happening in the body. And so I don't mind starting there and seeing what can be changed, but being mindful that we might not be able to make, first off, I know we can't make the change in everybody. We can't make a brain-based shift in their pain. My current thinking is that in the larger field of pain management, you've got the classic cognitive behavioral approaches to manage pain and rehabilitation management approaches and acceptance and commitment therapy, which says, even though you're living in pain, let's live better according to your values and it'll function better. Those approaches might be best suited for people whose pain experience is largely being driven by bodily pathologies. I don't do much of this work with people with rheumatoid arthritis or inflammatory bowel diseases or neuropathic pains or sickle cell pain. Though even in all of the cancer-based pain, Though, even with those pains, there can be another component that shows up, which is more central, which is more brain-based. 